Once we've seen loops and we've written code with loops, it's all well and good to say, well, here's what happens with a loop if it's written correctly. But maybe the obvious question you should be asking is, what happens if it breaks? What if I write code and the loop isn't perfect? Now, it's true that one of the errors you could get is you could just forget something. So, of course, I could leave these brackets empty. I'm not sure why you would do this. But there is the obvious case of what happens if you get a syntax error. And as usual, this syntax error might not help us too much, but it tells us, hey, take a look at this line. If anything seems up to you, see what it is. Um, I'm, there is obviously that kind of error. Syntax errors are not much fun, but they're often easier to diagnose because the compiler helps you out. What I'm talking about is a semantic error. You run your loop and it doesn't work properly. Now, one thing to remember for the rest of the course, and not just for loops, is that if you're ever noticing a problem with code, it's not doing what you expected it to do, but you've stared at the code and, and you think you did everything correctly, there is always one remedy. And we'd rather avoid it most of the time, but there's always one remedy, which is if you trace the code line by line, by hand, and you duplicate what the computer does, you will notice at some point it does something wrong. It doesn't do what you want, what you meant it to do. And so I just call that good old fashioned debugging, walking through the code line by line. And it's really time consuming and really tedious, but it will catch your problem. It might not be easy to know how to fix the problem once you've found it, but that will find the problem. And there are times students come to me and say, my code doesn't work, I don't know what to do. And even I can't give them much help because I can't even see the problem. And I have to tell them, time for some good old fashioned debugging. And it's nobody's favorite. So we should talk about if there are any techniques we could use to diagnose maybe the obvious issues with a loop. And usually if the problem is the loop itself, the issue is caused by not following the recipe. So I mentioned already that a loop requires three ingredients to function correctly. And if you don't have all three of them, the loop will likely not work and strange things can happen. And so we should at least get used to seeing what strange things happen so we know what to think about if we have a loop that doesn't work. So the three ingredients, like I talked about last time, are we need a starting point, somewhere to begin. And in my program over on the left, my starting point is n equals 1. I'm printing out the squares just like before. I typically call formally, the starting point will be called initialization, somewhere to initialize the loop. And when we use a while loop, we do that before the word while. The second ingredient that we always need is our continuation condition, which is a yes or no question where if the answer comes back as yes, we execute the loop body and then come back around and ask the question again. If the answer to my continuation condition is ever no, then I skip to the end and the loop is over. The third ingredient I need is a way of making progress. I need the loop to keep moving so that eventually the answer to this question might be yes this time, and maybe it's yes the next time, but eventually the answer should be no, so that the program can continue moving and eventually the program can end. If I don't have my incrementation, a way of making progress, and we already saw it, doesn't have to be n equals n plus one, just something that lets the loop keep moving. If I don't have that, the loop won't function correctly. So let's see what happens if I'm missing some of those ingredients or if they're incorrect. So the first thing I want to do is make sure I've fixed my syntax error. All right, there it is. And here it is printing out the squares of 1 through 5. And I think to myself, I want to make this table not go from 1 to 5, but go from 10 up to 15. So I type, OK, I'm going to start at n equals 10. And then for some reason, I forget to type 15 here. I leave it at n less than or equal to 5. And so we see here, I guess I'll clear the display and then run it again. I'm going to compile it. I'm going to run it. And it does nothing. It prints start on line 13. And then it prints end on line 21, which means it must be getting down to line 21. But what happened here? I mean, there's this print statement that says, oh, whoops, there's this print statement that says something squared is something. Why didn't I ever see that? So Usually you might see if the loop never runs, there's a certain suspect. But let's just do a mock-up of what would happen if I trace through this. Okay, so on line 14, I make up a new variable. I guess I'm in my box called main. I make up a new variable called and it's an int, and I set it to 10. I go down to line 16, and I ask the question, is n less than or equal to 5? And the answer is no. 10 is not less than or equal to 5. And so the loop ends, and that's it. And you might notice this is a problem with the ingredients of my loop. They're not working well together. And maybe it's a problem with my starting point. Maybe it's a problem with my continuation condition. But if I notice that the loop never seems to run, then those two things should be my suspects. In this case, it's because I didn't set my continuation condition to be correct. So we'll run that, make sure that that works. 
All right. Uh, okay, so now it goes from 10 up to 15. So while we're on the subject of continuation conditions that don't work, what happens if I accidentally set this continuation condition to be the opposite thing that I want? So what if I set it to be n is greater than 15? So at the beginning, of course, n is 10. That's not greater than 15. And we'll notice the same thing happens. The loop just never runs. And remember, it's absolutely, oh, whoops, I have to save the file before I can prove my point. Um, you might notice, of course, if, if your code doesn't seem to be cha if your program doesn't seem to be changing when you change your code, remember to save the file. So in this case, again, the loop never ran at all. And it, it's completely valid for a loop to not run. We'll see in the course there are lots of cases where we expect, in some situations, a loop to run zero times. But here, if we want to print out a table, obviously, if I notice the loop is not running, maybe I should check the continuation condition, and then also maybe check initialization to make sure that it's there and that it's correct. So I'll go back to less than or equal to 15. So uh, the notes that I'm posting will show this, but you have a choice when you ask these yes or no questions. You can say less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to. You could also ask, is it equal? Notice there's two equal signs there. And that's because the one equal sign is already used for something else, for assignment statements. And you could also ask, is it not equal to 15? And that's this strange operator here. And we'll talk about those a bit more later. So I'm going to go back to n is less than or equal to 15. And I'll clear my display here, and we will run it and take a look at what happens. And there we are back to 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So what happens if I forget this? So this thing here is my incrementation, some way of making progress. And uh, obviously, if I'm missing that, what's going to happen? Well, I'm going to comment this. Actually, we'll just delete it. I'm going to delete this. And you might notice that n starts at the value 10, and there is nowhere else in my program where, where I say n equals. And that means n is going to have the value 10 for all eternity. OK, so that's fine. So I get into the loop, and I say, is n less than or equal to 15? Nope. Okay, so I print out 10 squared is 100. And then I go around again. Is n less than or equal to 15? Yep, it's still less than or equal to. Okay, so I keep running the loop over and over again. I think I might have misspoken a minute ago. Uh, n is less than or equal to 15 for all eternity because n is always equal to 10. So what happens? Well, we stick, we, we stick around inside the loop, rattling around in the loop forever. And so I'll, I'll show you what happens when that occurs. I'm going to press a key when this behavior starts. And if you're in the terminal and you see this happening, what you want to press is Control C. So I'll actually, type, I'll actually write that in. You want to press the Control key and, the, and C inside the terminal. Um, you'll notice the behavior. It, it's pretty obvious. So I run it, and then it just keeps printing out 10 squared is 100 over and over again. And it'll just do this for years if you leave it. It'll just keep going, printing hundreds and hundreds of lines because it's just sitting inside that loop and there's no way for the loop to end. And that's because I start at 10, but I never make any progress. I never go up to n equals 11. And so that's a case. Uh, it's a situation that we call an infinite loop, a loop that can never end. And in this case, the fault lies with the incrementation condition. And just to be clear, if you ever notice that happening, your terminal is running away from you, it keeps printing out more and more output, press Control C. Um, you might, I would encourage, frankly, just press Control C over and over again until it stops, because in some cases it slows everything down and it takes a little while to respond. It's no big deal if that happens, just keep pressing it until it stops. You can even close your browser window if you want to and then reopen it if it still doesn't um, respond, doesn't come back to the terminal. So if you don't have an incrementation condition, then that can cause an infinite loop. But there actually are other ways of causing an infinite loop. You could have it so that you have an incrementation condition, but your continuation condition is somehow mismatched. So one example would be, what if I wrote, well, n is greater than 5, and I start n at 10. And each step, n gets bigger. So I do 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And you might think about that and notice that if I start at 10, n is always going to be greater than 5 if I do n equals n plus 1. And so the continuation condition is always going to have the answer yes. And that means that I'm also going to end up with an infinite loop, just a different kind of infinite loop. So we'll try that. And I'm going to press Control C, and you can see it stopped. And something really weird happened there at the end. Notice that 57,000 squared is definitely not this number. 
And what's happened there is that 57,000 squared is so big that it's bigger than 2 billion, which means it wraps around to negative values. Now, of course, the program's broken, so we shouldn't be surprised that it prints out a bunch of garbage. So notice that what happened was the value of n just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and it printed out millions of lines of output. I guess not millions. It printed out 56,000 lines of output before we stopped it. So the computer is pretty fast. Um, and the issue was our loop never ended. It was an infinite loop. It would keep going for hours if I let it. I'm actually almost inclined to let it here. Um, so you can see it just kept going around and around. It's at 130,000 now. And it would just keep going. And so that's because I have an infinite loop. And in this case, the culprit is my continuation condition. Now you might look at this and say, well, of course, why are you writing a continuation condition with a greater than sign? Of course, that's going to cause problems. And the answer, I don't believe that. There are cases where your continuation condition could be uh, involving a greater than sign. For example, what if I wanted my table to start at 10 and then go downwards, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and then stop? In that case, I would want to start at 10. My continuation condition is keep going while it's greater than 5, and at each step, subtract 1 from n, go downwards from 10. So we'll try that out. Uh, I'm going to clear. Uh, and in this case, all three ingredients are playing well together. I start at 10. At each step, I ask, is it greater than 5? And if it is, I keep going. And at each step, I decrement n. I subtract 1 from n. But I am making progress, because in terms of what I want to do, starting at 10 and working downwards, I am actually taking one step closer to having the continuation condition come back with a no answer at each step. Uh, and so this loop is correct. All, of the, all three ingredients are present and they're all working together. But if you have a case where one of the three ingredients doesn't work with the others, you could end up with a loop never running, you could end up with an infinite loop, or you could end up with strange behavior that you weren't expecting, like the loop doesn't run enough times. Um, you might also notice that because it says n is greater than 5, the table stops at 6. Because when n actually is 5, this question comes back with the answer no. If I ask, is 5 greater than 5? The answer is no, it isn't. 5 is equal to 5. Um, and so in this case, this is a, uh, we have a valid continuation condition and incrementation where we happen to be going in an unconventional order, but it's fine because they're working together. So if you ever notice that your loop isn't running at all or that it seems to never end, then probably what you have is a case of these ingredients uh, not all being complete or not all cooperating with each other.